Eclipses have been known throughout history to be incredibly awe-inspiring, and yet, at their core, they are really incredibly simple things. An eclipse is just a matter of an object blocking a source of light. But, when that object is another world, and it transforms in seconds the daytime sky into night, and creates a dawn sky in 360 degrees all around. And when it happens, suddenly the birds stop singing, the air chills, and when you look overhead, you see what appears to be a black sun. An eclipse suddenly becomes so much more. All I can tell you is, it is one thing to know what they are scientifically, and it is another thing entirely to be in the heart of one. Though, to try to bring the essence of that experience to you, I set out several cameras to capture the eclipse as best I could. And I did not follow the general rules, which is to say, I did not put protective filters on the cameras. The reason being, I wanted you to be able to experience what an eclipse really looks like, not an eclipse heavily darkened. Now, there's no danger to me or my eyesight doing this, because I controlled this camera through a wireless remote, and the viewing screen cannot produce the harmful radiation that can damage one's eyesight. I did know that doing this, I might permanently damage this camera, but it's an old and inexpensive model of GoPro. I don't want it destroyed, but if it's destroyed in this process, so be it. It's worth it. The GoPro view is on the right, and what you are seeing is our position in the Deep Woods Forest Break, about halfway up eastern New Brunswick. The time is 4.33. The sun is more than 99% obscured, but still it's very bright. Yet the beginning of totality is only moments away. In the last few seconds before totality happens, something utterly amazing happens. The flat and even snow of the forest break works like a projection screen, providing a spectacular view of a phenomenon known as shadow bands, racing, swimming shadows, rushing across the landscape but rarely seen, that become visible only in the moments before complete totality and in the moments as totality breaks. As we get closer to full totality, the shadow bands become more defined. The human eye is much better at seeing subtle contrast than a camera, so I split this image in two. The lower image shows the natural view as the camera caught it, and the upper image shows a high contrast version, which allows a better view of the racing shadow bands. With this eclipse, from the moment one can see the first rapid darkening of the sky, to the moment totality falls completely, and the sky is as dark as it's going to get, takes just over 80 seconds. The darkening of the landscape, it seems so unnatural, so otherworldly. It's easy to imagine how the ancients came up with such myths as dragons eating the sun. And I can fully understand how they must have felt when they looked up at that eerie black sun and thought the world must be coming to an end. We see so many pictures of this through telescopes, filtered, magnified, and amplified to show the sun's activity as bends around the circumference of the moon. But to actually stand underneath it and see the world beneath a black sun, a sun that you can look directly at in that brief instance of totality, and see clearly, but with an eerie darkness, a black sun in the heart of it, that, that is another thing entirely. Another amazing phenomenon of the eclipse is the eerie dawn horizon light that happens in every direction. In all directions around us, the sky is lit as if the sun is just about to come over the horizon. When, as you can see in the image on the right, the sun is still well in the sky. It's just after 4.36 p.m. at this point, and totality has been going on about two minutes. There is just over a minute of totality left. On the left, we'll revisit the last few moments before the eclipse happened, when the moon is moving that last fraction of a percent toward complete blockage of the sun, the shot is unfiltered. Notice the changing of the color and quality of the light, as if the blue is slowly washed out of the sky. And in the last moment, as if the sun is making one last gasp, there's a flaring of orange-yellow hues around the sun. And then, in an instant, it is gone the bright sun replaced by an eerie black star and one of the most awe-inspiring instances I have ever experienced. With less than a minute left till totality ends, an eerie silence has fallen over the land. 
the wildlife gone still. It is incredible, but sadly over so quickly. But it comes with its own rewards, because as the moon begins to move out of the path of the sunlight, the shadow bands reappear, swimming across the new snow, swift as a clear rushing river, or like flying leaves, or the telltale shadows of forest sprites. Many strange and mysterious phenomena occur during a total solar eclipse, but of all of them, the shadow bands are considered perhaps the most mysterious. They flit across the ground at some 10 feet per second, and they are exceedingly difficult to capture and photograph because their contrast is so low. In a still photo, they will just look like part of the natural contours of the land. In fact, if you pause this video at any point, they will seem to vanish. To really catch them well, in my limited experience, it must be done in video. Sometimes hopeful eclipse observers will set out screens in hopes of observing the shadow bands. Things like a blanket or a pale sheet of poster paper. The problem is, the shadow bands move so fast that these small surfaces do not present enough perspective. Now here, in Acadia, New Brunswick, where we went to observe the eclipse, the snow was nearly gone everywhere, but by sheer luck, we found this forested break and a region where snow still somehow persisted, and it gave us just the right type of ground to see them. But the day is brightening rapidly. Watching an eclipse is like watching a sunset and then a dawn happen in mere seconds. And as soon as the moon has moved enough to reveal barely a single percent of the sun again, one can barely tell that the sun is still mostly obscured by the moon. The sun is just that powerful. But as the light waxes, so do the mysterious and beautiful shadow bands fade. Until now, only high contrast photography seen above can reveal them. As they fade, they become more diffuse and spread out, until they just seem to dissolve as if they never were. The cause of the shadow bands is not fully understood, but one of the leading theories is that they are caused by the same shimmering of the atmosphere that causes stars to twinkle. Stars twinkle because they are single points of light, due to their distance effectively infinitely small, and the light that comes from those effectively infinitely small luminaries can be stirred about in the frothing atmosphere that surrounds our world, causing stars to appear to twinkle. By contrast, planets barely appear to twinkle. This is because planets subtend a tiny region of sky. They are not infinitely small point light sources, so their light is not so prone to being stirred about by the atmosphere. And the sun and moon do not appear to twinkle at all because they are much broader sources of light. So the theory behind the shadow bands is that as the moon covers the last slender sliver of the sun, that sliver becomes an arc of infinitely small points of light one beside the other. And thus, for an instant, the light from the sun can twinkle in the atmosphere like stars, which only makes sense because the sun is a star. The difference is the sun's starlight is powerful enough to make it all the way to the earth where we can see it at times when it appears as the racing shadow bands along the ground. But that is only a theory and the fact is no one knows exactly what causes the shadow bands. But just like the eclipse, they are ephemeral and in a moment they are gone and the sky is once again blue though a telescope with a good filter would still reveal the moon covering by far the majority of the sun. But the tale of the full movement of the moon across the sun is perhaps a story for others to tell. For myself, the black sun and the shadow bands were the true story today. Thank you for joining me on the Sky Story channel and coming along with me on this journey into the heart of totality beneath the April 8th, 2024 eclipse as experienced here in Eastern Canada in Acadia, New Brunswick. If you enjoy learning the story of the sky, please like and subscribe. And if you're an astrophotographer, get out there and shoot the sky.